Top performing internal audit groups share similar traits. They focus more on streamlined, tailored, impactful communications and reporting. They evolve and adapt routinely. And they push themselves to find and build talent and resources from both within and outside their organizations. But guess what? Fewer than 6 in 10 internal audit functions have access to the talent they need across any of the 12 next-generation internal audit competencies in Protivity's proprietary model. This is Kevin Donahue, Senior Director with Protivity, welcoming you to a new edition of Powerful Insights. These are some of the key findings from Protivity's latest next-generation internal audit survey. We conducted our study online in the fourth quarter of 2022 and had more than 550 internal audit leaders and professionals from around the world respond. Our results are detailed in our report, Achieving Audit Relevance, available at Pertivity.com. I had the great pleasure of speaking with two Pertivity Global leaders about some of the highlights from this study. They are Pertivity Managing Directors, Andrew Struthers-Kennedy and Angelo Palacacos. Andrew serves as the global leader for our internal audit and financial advisory practice, while Angelo is the global leader for our technology audit practice. Angelo, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Andrew, great to speak with you as well. Same, Kevin. Always great to be with you. So, Andrew, let me toss you the first question here. When it comes to relevance for CAEs and the internal audit function, our research shows that impactful communications, including high-impact reporting, are the most important contributor to uh, achieving this relevance in the eyes of a leadership, the board, and the C-suite. What do you think it takes to deliver high-impact communications, and where do you find internal audit functions lagging on average? Well, first, Kevin, I would say I 100% agree with that from all of the interactions we have and the feedback we hear, uh, and also from the surveys that we conduct on this topic and you know what it takes to really drive and increase relevance for and, and value for uh, internal audit practitioners and in, in the internal audit function. I, I might first say that kind of knowing your audience is a, 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 a key point. Uh, recognizing that the needs are very different across the range of stakeholders and report recipients that internal audit interacts with. And those vary from control operators, control executors, all the way to executives and board members. Uh, Trying to focus reporting on what each of those stakeholders needs to know um, and using kind of communication tools like the five C's, uh, making sure communications are conversational, clear, concise, connected, correct, uh, focusing on the things that the stakeholders really need to know to to take action, given their role. Um, I think a few critical elements to consider in communications, uh, are they clear and concise? Are they relevant and timely? Are they appropriately personalized or customized? Uh, Increasingly, are they making use of data? Are they data driven? Are we making use of visual aids and or graphics where appropriate? Uh, are they connected back and aligned back to key risks and objectives that the audit activity is seeking to address? And are they in a format that allows for interactive and dynamic kind of content? Um, so of, of the, the areas I just mentioned, um, in, a, in a webinar that we conducted, we asked some polling questions. And coming through fairly clearly in the responses were uh, data-driven being a priority. Clarity and conciseness being a priority and relevance and timeliness. Uh, And I would say uh, at least two of those three uh, internal audit functions have an opportunity to to continue to to drive improvement around. Uh, In particular, the use of data, the use of visual aids, the use of graphics and reporting, and probably timeliness of reporting and communicating kind of at the speed of the findings that we identify and at the speed of the risk of the organization. So th- those are just a few thoughts. Maybe, Angelo, I'll, I'll ask you if you've got anything else that you'd like to, to add. You know, I think you really nailed it, Andrew. I, I would only add maybe one other area, which is you know, just focusing the communications on value creation and how can internal audit contribute to areas of meaningful improvement for the business? Are there any cost-saving opportunities? Are there any uh, opportunities to add efficiency into a process? 
uh, you know, and risk mitigation is always key, but you know, too often we'll see uh, audit reports that are focused on documentation oriented findings where the folks that are performing a business process are doing the right things. They may not be documenting what they're doing. Uh, and sometimes that becomes too much the focal point of report. So really anything the department can do to focus on demonstrating the value uh, or, or opportunities for value creation by the business. And one thing I find really interesting in my role in marketing thought leadership development, I'm being told increasingly that our communications, our messages have to be concise and impactful and resonate with an audience that may have an attention span of one minute. And this is consistent with what you're saying around internal audit reports as well, where all of us seem to be dealing with an audience that is not interested in doing a deep dive right away. You need to get to the point and do it impactfully. And, and Kevin, I think just to, to react to that, I, I think that reinforces the need to really grab the attention of the, the stakeholder. Uh, and again, that stakeholder could be a control operator that needs to have a very different set of information to take specific action, or it could be an executive or a board member that needs to perhaps understand the issue at a higher level and a bro- and have you know and make a broader set of decisions associated with it. So grab their attention, uh, tell them the three things that they need to know. Be very clear. Be very direct. Be very concise to the extent that you can support that with with data. Um, that's tremendously helpful. So I think those are those are some things that we see consistently. We see as opportunities for improvement, and we see as opportunities to create tremendous value in the communication cycle uh, for internal audit practitioners. Well, data is a key theme here, and I think it's a, a good lead to our next question. Angelo, another key finding from our study is that skills and capabilities in next generation enabling technologies, uh, process mining, AI, machine learning, advanced analytics, automation continue to lag. In many ways, such such technologies seem to be the future or at least a critical part of it in internal audit. Why is there not more progress being made in these areas? Yeah, Kevin, that's a very insightful question. I would say it's very true that despite the strong potential these technologies can bring to the internal audit function, progress has been a lot slower than anticipated. You know, I I joined the profession about 20 years ago, and I feel like we are still talking about bringing analytics into the internal audit function. Uh, But, but, you know, as I was saying, there's, I think there's a few reasons. And first and foremost, I think there still is a lack of understanding and expertise in these technologies, specifically among internal audit professionals. I think this technology, uh, I'm sorry, this knowledge gap, it can, it can make it challenging to identify the right use cases and to integrate these technologies effectively within existing audit processes. And namely, I think there's been such advancement in technology in general with, you know, you're always hearing about new tools, new techniques. And and I just think that has outpaced the speed at which internal audit professionals can learn and adapt. So when you consider the time uh, and the priorities of an internal audit function at their core, they're focused on driving compliance and risk management. They do not have as much time to focus on learning cutting edge technologies. And I think part of that might be because there's a lack of a targeted uh, time and, and training programs specifically tailored for internal auditors, helping them acquire these skills. Uh, you know, and I think you know another another reason is, and, and I alluded to it, is just the, the the investment that's needed in time and in resources. So we've been hearing it for for several years, but organizations continue to face budget constraints, competing priorities. And they sometimes struggle to justify the ROI for some of these initiatives that may involve, you know, learning a new technology or more importantly, implementing some new technology with an internal audit context. And, and there could also be that resistance to change within organizations, which we, we hear about quite often. Um, so, you know, I think uh, during a webinar, you know, the, the same webinar that Andrew was alluding to, we talked a lot about chat GPT. We talked a lot, a lot about large language models. And the, the consensus was, you know, these tools, technologies have not been adopted despite them being very easily accessible to the community. 
Uh, and I think legitimately there are concerns around data security, compliance, and potential biases uh, as it relates to AI and machine learning algorithms. But I also think internal auditors, by their very nature, tend to be you know risk averse. Uh, they so you know part that that likely contributes to them not wanting to adopt something new because it is changing the way they've traditionally done things, and they're worried about you know failing to meet on other. Uh, priorities that they may have in place. So Angelo, maybe I'll just jump in on that kind of last point. Um, but I mean, because I, I think one of the things that, that we consistently hear around uh, barriers to progress or things that inhibit progress, at least at speed, is the challenge of competing priorities. And I think there's so much that's expected of internal audit functions these days. Complete the plan, uh, and that includes kind of addressing established risks as well as those in emerging areas and those re- that are requiring kind of increasingly uh, deep technical knowledge, keep up with the evolving risk landscape and the organization's transformation efforts, uh, allowing the kind of the function to audit at the speed of risk, focus on delivering high levels of value and relevance, hire, train, retain talent, be available to support management requests and provide advisory and consultative services. I mean, just keeping up with all of those activities is more than many internal audit functions have the capacity to handle. So layering in uh, exploration, adaptation, adoption of new technologies, layering in transformation efforts and and innovative initiatives, that's a legitimate challenge for for many functions. Uh, So finding ways to kind of uh, transform, adopt, adapt, and innovate incrementally and through iteration, uh, identifying team members that are legitimately interested, enthusiastic, and are showing a level of aptitude towards these emerging risk areas, topics, and technologies is a is a good way to help drive progress. Uh, and then also kind of embed, trying to embed the the exploration and use of these into routine activities and execution is, is another method that we've seen uh, as as a way of kind of making progress. Yeah, Andrew, and, I, and I, one thing just I would add is the good news is there continues to be advancement in these technologies and they're becoming more and more easy to use and they're going to become more integrated into office products that we're already familiar with. Microsoft made an announcement about them introducing a, a platform called Copilot, which will be a AI, you know, on your day-to-day applications, whether it's Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And I think it's going to help really enable the auditor and really help them accelerate some of their day-to-day activities. So the good news is the technology is going to be really in some ways forced on the internal audit uh, functions because they're just going to become embedded as part of their day-to-day uh, tools that they're already used to using. And I am guessing here that a common response to uh, conveying the need to address these areas might be, well, we don't have time. We have too many competing priorities. But from what you said, a response, the the appropriate response or an appropriate response might be, this is an opportunity not only to improve your function, but it, to engage your people in a challenging assignment to enable them to reach and give them some rewarding experiences. So Kevin, I think that's 100% right. Um, and we we also kind of see in here, including through survey results, that there's very strong support from executives and board members around upskilling, driving transformation efforts, pursuing innovation initiatives. So board, board and C-level stakeholders are highly supportive and, and even have, frankly, heightened expectations around internal audits, use and pursuit, pursuit of the things we've been talking about. So elevating the the challenge in finding capacity, time and space to pursue to the execs and to the audit committee is something we would strongly recommend. Put it on the agenda, have an open discussion around it, seek support in uh, getting access to additional resources or reprioritizing uh, and ensure that if it can't be prioritized in the near term. That's that's well understood and is sort of mutually agreed upon. Andrew, let's dig a little more into these areas of innovation and transformation. 
Um, our research indicates that, uh, and I'll read here, evolving how the internal audit function coordinates and aligns with other assurance functions and having an internal audit strategy that is better defined and aligned to the overall organization are the two top transformation priorities for internal audit organizations over the coming year. These two priorities align very much with the broader objective to grow internal audit's relevance, don't they? Yeah, a- absolutely. And I, and I think um, in some ways this links back to the, the risk alignment item uh, we've talked about and ensuring there's a, a level of kind of consistency in how activities are being communicated across the life cycle from risk ident- identification and assessment you know, so what risks are identified and prioritized, what race, rating systems are being used, how is the full body of knowledge, of risk knowledge of the organization being considered, to individual project scopes, so what's being included and excluded, uh, why, where is the coverage coming from, is it coming from core internal audit activities, from activities of other assurance functions, so on and so forth to even individual project reports and reports to executives and, and board members. So that that risk alignment, that connectivity, that consistency across the assurance functions, which is is one of the, the, the ways in which we talk about getting better aligned assurance. Uh, there's, there's, there's tons of opportunities to drive improvements around that uh, and increase the alignment of internal audit activities kind of for the to and for the overall organization. Um, through improved communication. So uh, I think the old saying kind of goes something along the lines of you can have the best content in the world, but it's it's not worth much if it can't be communicated effectively. And I think that that rings true here. Uh, and, you know, aligned assurance really is about sort of fundamentally robust collaboration, coordination and communication. Uh, and then, you know, the strategic alignment point is, is really about having good processes to to really understand and then be responsive to organization strategy, the strategy of the broader organization, key initiatives and evolving risks, and align the, in, the internal audit activities um, to, to, to those strategic priorities, key initiatives, and evolving risks that the organization is focused on. Thanks, Andrew. Angelo, let's pivot back to the technology side of the equation. Um, Andrew brought up a point earlier about uh, board interest and engagement in these areas of innovation and transformation. Um, Our study revealed an interesting finding. Board members and senior executives, 84% of them support acquiring or developing the necessary talent and skills related to next-gen enabling technology capabilities in the internal audit function. Can you talk a bit about the role technology tools play in building the internal audit function's relevance with the board and with senior executives and with stakeholders throughout the organization? Yes, uh, absolutely. So I think technology now uh, more than ever plays a key role in enhancing internal audits relevance. Uh, like you said, with the board, senior executives, other stakeholders across the organization. I think a num- it does this in a number of ways. The most obvious is, you know, you think of advanced analytics, technologies like process mining, automation. They ultimately enable internal audit functions to be more efficient and effective, provide a lot more meaningful insights, data-driven insights. It helps reduce their manual efforts so they're more focused on the underlying risks understanding the root cause of any types of issues. Um, so I think in many, many ways, you know, technology is going to become more and more crucial. Internal audit can't just be taking a sample-based approach when they're evaluating a high-risk area. So ultimately, you know, this technology is really going to help drive more insightful, timely, accurate, comprehensive audits, which hopefully are valued by the stakeholders you were mentioning. Uh, I was talking about individual audit activities, but a lot of these technologies also will help enhance the risk assessment process. So that's really going to help, you know, allow audit to be focused on the areas uh, of, of, stri- of most strategic importance and highest risk facing the organization. You know, we know internal audit departments, you know, have a budget. So at least now with, with technologies like process mining or advanced analytics, as internal audit is building their audit plan for the year, they're going to be focused on the areas, uh, the most critical aspects of the organization, and hopefully those that are in alignment uh, with the strategy or the barriers that could prevent that strategy uh, from realizing. 
earlier, Andrew was talking about high impact reporting and communication. So as you can imagine, you know, having access and, and, and understanding how to apply advanced visualization techniques and reporting tools allow internal audit to present their findings in a more compelling way, in a more concise manner. And I think that's going to, that's very important. We all have our attention spans, thanks to, you know, the, the way things are trending with social media have only shortened. So to the extent internal audit could really summarize their three key points on a one pager, that's going to be really well received by, uh, by, by executives and the board. And, you know, we, you know, I think a lot of internal audit functions, their, their, their one, number one goal is to move to a mode of continuous auditing, continuous monitoring. And some of the next gen technologies that we're seeing are, are going to help allow and enable that. That's going to get internal audit to a position where we're not just waiting for the audit in Q3 or Q4 to reveal opportunities for improvement, but rather we have real time reporting capabilities. So, you know, technology in many, many ways is, is crucial for internal audit teams to stay relevant. And I think that the bar is only increasing. This has been a terrific discussion. Um, thank you both. Just a reminder for our audience that our full research report, Achieving Audit Relevance, uh, is available on the uh, Pertivity website and the, the link will be in the show notes as well. So, A final question that I'll have both of you answer, uh, and it's a big one. Um, We can't end our discussion without touching more on talent. There are so many eye-opening findings in our research. Top top people-related concerns include the ability to recruit qualified candidates, retain people, uh, upskill, and train the team. On average, fewer than six in 10 internal audit functions have access to the talent they need across any of the 12 primary next-gen internal audit components. Um, So this is a big question. Uh, Andrew, I'll have you respond first. What does the current talent landscape look like in internal audit, and what do CAEs need to do to ensure they have the necessary talent and skills to elevate their function's relevance? First, I think uh, it would be hard for anyone to argue that uh, talent isn't a top priority. Uh, There's no... There's no audit function, no business function really that can execute against their objectives without sufficient capacity and with the, without the right capability. And internal audit is certainly not any exception. In fact, I would probably argue that uh, the, the extent to which internal audit is expected to develop and have access to necessary talent uh, is uh, more severe or more acute than we see in many other business functions, just given the role they play within and for the organization, um, expected to be able to go in and engage on a very broad range of topics, often at significant levels of depth, being able to keep up with the rapidly evolving and emerging set of risks and, and priority areas as we've kind of talked about being increasingly technology and data savvy, right? Complementing that with very strong soft skills around communication, project management, leadership capabilities, and many more. So there is a legitimate challenge. I think, uh, you know, a couple of thoughts. One, um, internal audit functions and leaders need to have a really solid people and talent an upskilling strategy um, and really tap into the legitimate kind of interest and enthusiasm and desire for learning that exists in all, all of the teams that we see and interact with um, because there is just a tremendous interest and desire to, to learn more about you know, all the topics that, that we've talked about and that are of, of focus for um, internal audit function. So, so I think having a really solid strategy around upskilling uh, and learning and development is is really important um and and then i think just being you know very focused on uh core and emerging risks you know areas such as fraud cyber esg ai data governance regulatory frameworks compliance those make up a, a large percentage of internal audit plans uh, ac- across industries 
Um, and the internal audit, you know, leaders and functions need the skills and experiences to match. They need to hire from increasingly varied backgrounds. You know, so that would be something, again, I, 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 we strongly encourage, uh, as well as train team members in, in, in increasing breadth and depth of skills. And, and maybe I'll ask kind of Angelo to kind of weigh in, but, um, you know, that, that's just uh, you know, a, few, a few areas that we're seeing internal audit leaders that are very focused on this and are acknowledging the need to continue to build capability uh, using as, as, as techniques to, to do that. Yeah, Andrew, I, when you were mentioning, you know, things around, you know, diversifying internal audits, talent acquisition strategy, I, sometimes I think of myself, I was a computer engineer and I fell into the, the into a career of internal audit. And I think my, my educational background has caused me always to be interested in breaking things and uh, p- putting them back together. Uh, but I do think that is important. You know, CAE should be thinking about diversifying uh, the type of candidates that they're looking for. If they're, you know, rotating in candidates from other departments, if, if the organization has some type of data science department uh, or cybersecurity department, thinking about ways of in- introducing those types of resources even if for a, a temporary basis into the function, but also thinking about what schools the organization might be recruiting from and the types of degrees um, that you know could could really help and enable uh, the department. So I think that is that is one method. Uh, another method that that I know we, we do internally within our firm, but I, I don't necessarily always see most internal audit organizations do is really assessing skills and competencies and really having a focus on doing that in a methodical manner. I think too often we make too many assumptions around what people should know versus what they actually know. So I think having some type of skills assessment process or making it a living process to really take into account the evolving organizational context, emerging risks, advancements in technology, uh, not only understanding where our skills at within the department, but where our interests at. And that was a little bit to Andrew's point. I, I, I really do think it helps when you could align individuals to focus on areas that they're passionate about. And you're not just pushing the same training agenda to everybody, but you're, you're establishing more targeted training programs that allow the team to upskill in areas that align with their interests. Uh, so, you know, this could be a focus on technology, like what we were talking about earlier around analytics, process mining, AI, uh, or it could cover, you know, various technology audit domains, such as cybersecurity and cloud, or it could cover different aspects of the business and the industry. Uh, but, but I do think, you know, ultimately that is, um, you know, a, an area that just needs a lot of focus. It, it requires the department to establish uh, a learning culture and to actually devote the time uh, towards that. And you know, we know as internal audit professional uh, as internal audit professionals, we need to keep up with our CPE credits to maintain some of our certifications. And I think organizations that take this seriously do embrace a learning culture. They do allocate plenty of time throughout the year for folks to take training. Uh, oftentimes, we're asked and called upon to deliver training to those to various internal audit teams. So, you know, they'll need to leverage external resources, which is my shameless plug, and I'll leave it to that. But, uh, but all in all, you know, I think you know it, it's being an internal audit is a fun place to be. You get to learn about a lot of different things, but ultimately, the, the organization needs to allow for some of that learning as well. My thanks to Andrew and Angela for their informative and and really interesting insights into this whole area of achieving audit relevance. The takeaways for me, concise, impactful communications are the name of the game, especially with a busy board and C-suite audience. And a lot of functions need to engage in the right technology tools starting today and they need to build the right people and skills and talent in their organization to enable that to happen. 
For more information, I encourage you to visit Pertivity's website and read our full report, Achieving Audit Relevance. And as always, I encourage you to please subscribe to our Powerful Insights podcast series and review us wherever you get your podcast content.